Pole reversal coming? Does Earth's magnetic field anomaly portend to a coming reversal? This is on The Conversation by Professor of Geophysics, University of Rochester, John Tarduno and Vincent Hare, Postdoctoral Associate in Earth Environmental Study Sciences, University of Rochester. Does an anomaly in the Earth's magnetic field portend a coming pole reversal? The Earth is blanketed by a magnetic field. It's what makes compasses point north and protects our atmosphere from continual bombardment for space and charged particles such as protons. Without a magnetic field, our atmosphere would slowly be stripped away by harmful radiation and life would almost certainly not exist as it does today. We've seen a tremendous increase in cosmic rays in the past five years, 18% increase, and the scientists in space weather believe that it could be because of the decreasing magnetic field allowing the cosmic rays to bombard our atmosphere. And of course they're deadly. Going back to this, they say you might imagine the magnetic field is a timeless constant aspect of life on Earth and to some extent you would be right. But Earth's magnetic field actually does change every so often on the order of several hundred thousands or years or so and the magnetic field has flipped. North has pointed south and vice versa. And when the flip of the field flips, it also tends to become very weak. We see diagrams here between reversals and during a reversal, what happens? Between reversal, north is north, south is south, and during a reversal, they're all the south and north are all over the place. Earth's magnetic field using models of what the magnetic field might be like during a reversal. Images from NASA. Now what currently has geophysicists, geophysicists like uh, us abuzz in the relation, realization of the strength of Earth's magnetic field has been decreasing for at least 160 years at an alarming rate. This collapse is centered in a huge expansion of the southern hemisphere extending from Zimbabwe to Chile. This is known as the South Atlantic Anomaly. The magnetic field strength is so weak there that it's a hazard for satellites that orbit above that region. They have to shut down. Now the field no longer protects them from radiation which interferes with satellite electronics. And the field is continuing to grow weaker, potentially portending even more dramatic events, including a global reversal of the magnetic poles. Such a major change would affect our navigation systems as well as transmission of electricity. The spectacle of the northern lights might appear at different latitudes, and because more radiation would reach Earth's surface under very low field strengths during a global reversal, it also might affect rates of cancer. We still don't fully understand what the extent of these effects would be. Adding urgency to our investigation, we're turning to some perhaps unexpected data sources, including 700-year-old African archaeological records to puzzle it out. What is the genesis of the geomagnetic field? Earth's magnetic field is created by convecting iron in our planet's liquid outer core. From the wealth of observation, observatory and satellite data and that document the magnetic field of ancient uh, or recent times, we can model what the field would look like if we had a compass immediately above the Earth's swirling liquid iron core. These analyses reveal an astounding feature. There is a patch of reverse polarity between southern Africa at the core mantle boundary where the liquid iron outer core meets a slightly stiffer part of the Earth's interior. In this area, the polarity of the field is opposite to the average global magnetic field. If we were able to use a compass deep under South Africa, we would see that it is, this is unusual patch north actually points south. North, north actually points south. This patch is the main culprit creating the South Atlantic Anomaly. 
In numerical simulations, unusual patches similar to the one beneath southern Africa appear immediately prior to geomagnetic reversals. This appears prior to a geomagnetic reversal. The poles have reversed frequently over history of the planet, but the last reversal is in the distant past, some 780,000 years ago. The rapid decay of the recent magnetic field and its pattern of decay naturally raises the question of what was happening prior to the last 160 years. Archaeomagnetism takes us further back in time. In archaeomagnetic studies, geophysicists team with archaeologists to learn about the past magnetic field. For example, clay used to make pottery contains small amounts of magnetic materials such as magnetite. When the clay is heated to make a pot, its magnetic minerals lose any magnetism they may have held. Upon cooling, the magnetic material minerals record the direction and intensity of the magnetic field at the time. If one can determine the age of the pot or the archaeological site from which it came using radiocarbon dating, for instance, then an archaeomagnetic history can be recovered. Using this kind of data, we have a partial history of archaeomagnetism for the Northern Hemisphere. In contrast, the Southern Hemisphere archaeomagnetism record is scant. In particular, there have been virtually no data from Southern Africa, and that's the region along the South, uh, with South America that might provide the most insight into the history of the reverse core patch creating today's South Atlantic anomaly. But the ancestors of today's Southern Africans, the Bantu-speaking metallurgists and farmers who began to migrate into the region between 2,000 and 1,500 years ago, unintentionally left us some clues. These Iron Age people lived in huts built of clay, and they stored their grain in hardened clay bins as the first agriculturists of the Iron Age of Southern Africa. They relied heavily on rainfall. The communities often responded to times of drought with rituals of cleansing that involved burning mud granaries. This somewhat tragic series of events for these people was ultimately a boon many hundreds of years later for archaeomagnetism, just as in the case of the firing and cooling of a pot, the clay in these structures recorded earth magnetic field as they cooled. Because the floors of these ancient huts and grain bins can sometimes be found intact, we can sample them to obtain a record of both the direction and strength of their contemporary magnetic field. Each floor is a small magnetic observatory with its compass frozen in time immediately after burning. With our colleagues, we focus our sampling on Iron Age village sites that dot the Limpopo River Valley, bordered today by Zimbabwe to the north, Botswana to the west, and South Africa to the south. The magnetic field in flux. Sampling at Limpopo River Valley locations has yielded the first archaeomagnetic history for Southern Africa between 1000 AD and 1600 AD. What we found reveals a period in the past near 1300 AD when the field in that area was decreasing as rapidly as it is today. When the intensity increased, albeit at a much slower rate, that's, that's what happened after that, the intensity increased, at a, albeit at a much slower rate, the occurrence of two intervals of rapid field decay, one 700 years ago and one today, suggest a recurrent phenomenon. Could the reversed flux patch presently under South Africa have happened regularly further back in time than our records have shown? If so, why would it occur again and at this location? Over the last decade, researchers have accumulated images from the analysis of earthquake seismic waves. A seismic shear wave moved through the Earth's layer, the speed with which they travel is an indication of the density of the layer, and now we know that a large area of slow seismic shear waves 
characterizes the core mantle boundary between South Africa. This particular region under South Africa has the, the Southern Africa has a somewhat wordy title of the African Large Low Shear Velocity Province. The African Large Low Shear Velocity Province. While many wince at the descriptive but jargon rich name, it's a profound feature that must be tens of millions of years old. While thousands of kilometers across, its boundaries are sharp, and interestingly, the reverse core flux patch is nearly incident, coincident with its eastern edge. The fact that the present day reverse core patch and the edge of the African large low shear velocity province are physically so close got us thinking. We've come up with a model linking the two phenomena. We suggest that the unusual African mantle changes the flow of iron in the core underneath, which in turn changes the way the magnetic field behaves at the edge of the seismic province and leads to the reversed flux passages, uh, uh, patches. We speculate that the reverse core patches grow rapidly and then wane more slowly. Occasionally, one patch may grow large enough to dominate the magnetic field of the southern hemisphere, and the poles reverse. The conventional idea of reversal is that they can start anywhere in the core. Our conceptual model suggests that there may be special places at the core mantle boundary that promote reversals. We do not know yet if the current field is going to reverse in the next few thousand years or simply continue to weaken over the next couple of centuries. But the clues provided by the ancestors of modern-day Southern Africans will undoubtedly help us to further develop our proposed mechanism for reversals. If correct, pole reser reversals may be out of Africa, quote-unquote. This story was updated to correct the units used in the last figure. Magnetic field strength is depicted in tens of nanotesla. And this is on the conversation. I'll leave a link below for you for this. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media, and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, and Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.